In our ongoing studies of DNA replication and repair from Chapter 20, we want now to consider telomeres. Recall that bacterial chromosomes are circular. There is an origin of replication, and replication proceeds in either direction. It terminates where the two replication forks meet, and then it is a simple, ma simple matter to seal the nick using DNA ligase. However, eukaryotic chromosomes are linear. There is no problem at the five prime ends of the template strand, pictured here on the lower left. The template strand is highlighted in blue and the new, newly synthesized DNA strand in purple. DNA polymerase will read the template strand in the three prime to five prime direction and synthesize the complement in the five prime to three prime direction. The result is that the newly synthesized strand is exactly the same length as the template strand. However, there is a problem at the three prime end of the template strand, pictured here on the lower right. Again, the template strand is in blue. The RNA primer, highlighted in red, has been synthesized and DNA polymerase has added on to that primer to synthesize the new DNA strand in purple. RNase H then removes that RNA primer and now we have a segment of DNA that is single-stranded. There is no complement. There is no way to replace, in this case, the RNA primer with DNA. In order to do so, DNA polymerase would have to read the template strand in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, and this it cannot do. The implication of the problem is that each round of DNA replication would lead to a shortening of the chromosome, and it wouldn't be too many replication cycles before the cell would feel the effect of those missing DNA segments. We solved this problem with the action of the enzyme telomerase. It adds a sequence of six nucleotides to the three prime end of the newly synthesized DNA strand, highlighted in our figure at the top in blue. As in the case of all DNA polymerases, synthesis proceeds in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. It adds repre repeats of a sequence TTAGGG, highlighted by the yellow boxes in our figure. In other words, the sequence is added TTAGGG, TTAGGG repetitively until there's a length of approximately 2 to 10 kb long, quite a length of these telomeres. It is interesting to note how the enzyme accomplishes this. Now it is a DNA polymerase, and so it must have a 3' OH to build on. But again, it's adding these sequences to the 3' end of the newly synthesized DNA strand. It also must have a template in order to determine which nucleotides to add to that 3' end. For this purpose, however, rather than a DNA template, it uses an RNA template. An RNA molecule containing approximately 451 nucleotides is a permanent part of this enzyme. This RNA molecule contains the template that is used to synthesize the complement of the template and produce these repetitive TTAGGG sequences. The activity of this enzyme is referred to as reverse transcriptase activity. Recall in transcription we use a DNA template to make an RNA molecule. In this case, telomerase is using an RNA template to make DNA. It is the reverse of transcription and therefore reverse transcriptase activity. This is similar to an enzyme that functions in HIV to make a DNA copy of its genome and then insert it into the host chromosome. Once that 3' end has been extended, the normal cellular DNA polymerase can then synthesize the complement. In other words, the telomerase only extends one strand and then DNA polymerase synthesizes the complement. Once the primer has been removed, on the newly synthesized DNA strand, we still have a shortened DNA segment, but it's the telomere that's been shortened and not the genome. You'll notice in this case we still have a region of single-stranded DNA, and that would be subject to nuclease digestion. For this purpose, then, the, t the telomere actually folds back on itself. The single-stranded region of DNA is very G-rich, and it inserts itself within the region of double-stranded DNA, 
forming more or less a ternary complex. This protects that single-stranded DNA region from nuclease digestion. There's a sheltering protein that binds to these T-loops and is thought to regulate their length. The length of the telomere may be an indicator of the cell's longevity. Remember, with each replication cycle, we're shortening that telomere, and before long, after so many replication cycles, we start to shorten the genome, and the cell cannot survive that. And so it has a limited number of replication cycles it can undergo. In our next video lesson, we want to look at the ways that DNA can be damaged and consider how often this occurs.